Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I thought about it for quite some time now that it's time for me to restart this series where we all learn from other photographers. And without any other long talk, let's start this new video with British landscape photographer Charlie White. Charlie White is a British landscape photographer. He's worldwide known. And this is his website, charliewhite.com. From here, we will take a look at 11 of his photos. There are some photos that I really like. And if you want to learn more about him and his workshops, the things that he is doing, just check out his website. Now, let's take a look at the photos and start talking because I think this is the most important aspect of this video series. Now, I will start with this photo that is uh, called Spluga Pass in Italy. And we are having, in this photo, there is a really big foreground element. And this is uh, something that has to be done with an intent and with a perfect understanding of what is happening. Because usually when you have such a big element in your photo, it kind of takes away from the rest of the image. So it's very important to have a continuity in the photo that makes sense. Usually uh, when you see something like this, it's kind of like um, a replica of what is behind it, what is in the background. And kind of this is what is happening over here. We have uh, a way of seeing these bigger mountains in the background in a really smaller uh, miniature version here in the foreground. And the photo, okay, has three planes, the foreground, the main ground is this lake and then the mountains. But all that it, that it matters in this image is this uh, foreground element pointing to another mountain over here. It's just like a small mountain that it takes you to uh, this other mountain in the background. Now, um, I will have photos of architecture and landscapes from Charlie White and this is um, a church, I think, is a, is a stairway. So whenever you are photographing urban environments, I think simplicity and uh, playing with the light and understanding how light and shadow, mostly shadow, can help you a lot in determining and creating a, a nice and pleasant atmosphere it's a very important aspect of um, of you as a photographer. In this case, you will uh, see that um, the photo has this shadow over here. This is very important for your image because this darker area will function as a stop element. And what it will do, it will keep your eye over here. This is very, very important to realize that the eye of the viewer it uh, should not escape your photo. Now, in terms of composition, I think the the composition is pretty simple, but it's effective. You have a diagonal, a vertical. Of course, if you would have a, a silhouette over here, it would have to be something that would work with this. So, it this this image can be by itself, but I also think that it could also work with a silhouette placed over here. Now this other building in Spain, I think this looks very, very beautiful. Um, uh, it's the, the only thing that I think could have been better, but it's not something that you can control is the position of the bird. Although in this position, the bird casts a shadow over here. Uh, I think the ideal position for this bird would have been here, but it's not something that you can you can control. So uh, the composition, I think it's perfect. And the fact that you also have a bird over here adds another something to the, uh, to the image. So you have a simple kind of rule of thirds and the leading lines uh, are basically this horizontal, this horizon line, and this zigzag that is taking you towards the building. Again, shadows are very important. So the moment of the day is very important because the shadow over here concentrates your eye over here. The shadow from over here points your eye to this direction. So it's not something that you just do. Photography, it's done with an intent if you want to have 
uh, a predictable and better result. Now let's move to, um, in some way, a classical black and white image. You have um, a foreground that is leading to an element, and then you have the sky. And whenever you try this, make sure you have some clouds in the sky, because otherwise it may look good in black and white, but it looks better with clouds because it, uh, they help separate the subject even better. So whenever you see some trees or a small forest in the middle of a field, you can go for a simple photo like this, where you can also place the horizon line right in the middle and the subject right in the middle. In a way, this is a minimalistic shot. In other way, it's not a minimalistic shot, but the composition is simple. It has only three elements and these two elements, the foreground and the background are lighter and the subject is darker and that is why it pops and it looks that good. Now, this is another image from Spain, is a geometrical uh, shape. It's, it's almost like an abstract form of art, if you want. And uh, again, you have soft shadows. This image can also work with really uh, contrast and dark shadows, but this way it looks like, it's almost it's like surreal. It's like all this white and then you have this patch of sky is so my advice for you is whenever you see simple geometry try to create uh, compositions then that place that simple geometry together with the natural world because the contrast is going to be so hard so visible then both of the elements will be um, put in a better light if you want this is uh, another image from Spain I think this is an image that talks about the perfect moment this is exactly that for me we have uh, first of all we have this fence that goes to this tree and usually this type of composition without the tree usually doesn't work because it separates the image into in two areas and this area is much more interesting than this one but because you have the tree at the end of the trail of the trail or the, uh, the fence the image works because it has balance it's like the tree is a, the guardian of these two worlds and you also have this perfectly positioned cloud I mean this is this is almost like looking and saying yeah, you, 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 you had to pay this cloud to be here at the right mo moment. So, um, again, it's not about luck. It's about being there at the right moment. And being there at the right moment means getting out and photographing as often as possible. Let's move to this photo with this yellow boat on the water. Now, let's question ourselves. Can this photo look good without this tree over here? And my answer is yes because it's a simple minimalistic shot and the boat would look like um, a spot of color without this tree this boat can be framed like this and it could also be framed a little smaller but what this tree does is offering um, a counterweight to the photo so this photo with this boat kind of leads to this direction and the tree comes like a pin that helps create equilibrium in the image and that is why it's important in the composition and it also adds dimension and depth to the image this is something that you always have to try and achieve in your landscape photos to create to give a sense of proportion and to give a sense of depth and how big and vast the landscape is now let's move to this uh, winter scene from France. I selected this photo because it looks like a painting. It, the, the, the saturation is not over the top. The image is really crisp and sharp and it resembles a painting. Now maybe the, the only thing that you could add to this photo would be to have some kind of a subject of all over here 
but this image as it is looks so wonderful and it's so pleasant to look at so calm that I had to select it and also this morning frost or yes it's frost I don't know if it's morning but okay the frost over here puts this small ruined cottage in a better light because it creates contrast and creates a separation now let's take a look at this uh, windmill reflection I think this is one of the most interesting images I've uh, I've seen from Charlie White it's really really beautiful and it's it's surreal it's like a dream it's like you're looking and you're not realizing at what you are looking at but you also realize what you're looking at you realize it's a windmill you realize it's a reflection but then you have this grass over here so it plays a little trick with your mind and I think that is why this image it's such a great one and this is something that I have to also remember when I see reflections to create this game where you have reflection and real elements together and the the eye and the brain doesn't understand exactly what is happening now this image of intentional movement camera I don't know it's made in Japan and I think Japan is the perfect place to do simplistic minimalistic um, or intentional movement shots like like uh, I talked about Michael Kenna's work and I think his work works the best in uh, in the islands of Japan of Japan and this image again speaks about the simplicity that is characteristic to this country to 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 the old paintings for example so it's a great it's a great way now the thing that you need to be careful when doing this is just like Charlie White did he moved his camera but in a way he preserved the the thing the composition and the subject that is in front of him I mean you realize that it's a horse on a plane and this is grass so with your movement you don't need to go over the board and create an image that nobody understands what's in it so be very careful and now the last image is a tree from Cappadocia in Turkey so whenever you see trees with um, beautiful leaves or in blossom like this one having a background to uh, to over over uh, imposed the tree I think creates uh, a, an image that it almost like it's it's an, um, it's like an an image that it's taken from nature it's like you took this tree and the, this grass and these flowers and you've put them in a uh, in a studio and you have a background over here and that is why I think it looks that good you have the graphical shapes given by the tree trunk and the branches and you have this simple background that helps you uh, concentrate on the trees just like photographing a portrait I think that is why I think uh, Charlie White did such a good job with this image because you look at this image and you realize yes it's about this tree and not something else now I hope you like the idea that this photo series is back and uh, again if you have suggestions for other photographers and other landscape painters to be included in this series place a comment below if you have questions if you have something to add or uh, just to express your ideas and your opinions use the comment section below and i hope you'll subscribe to this youtube channel for more videos thanks for watching keep on photographing because it's the only way to get better and bye bye